Um, the Mind Reels with Vincent Cloud. And Scotty Allwood. Hi, hello. I'm over here. Yeah, and I'm I'm over here most most days. But we're here together. We're here together yes. to discuss a movie because this is the Mind Reels. Yes, and what movie? None other than 1995's Heavyweights, which is kind of, uh, it's a little esoteric to some people. People are like, Heavyweights, what do you mean? Is that a boxing movie? I'm like, no, not not at all. But there are butter beans in there. So, there you go. He was a boxer once. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, but yeah, we're here to talk about heavyweights. Scott, let me ask you this. Why? What brought this up? Heavyweights is just a great movie. It's from the mid 90s, you know, from when I was a kid growing up as a hefty child, I could relate to the main character and the kids within the camp. I never actually went to fat camp, which is what this movie is about. Um, but I, I felt a lot of what they went through so and it's just funny it has been stiller and i love ben stiller this is me just looking off into the distance i don't ben stiller's not over there or anything but if he was i'd give him one of these gnarly bro this movie's gnarly wow uh you know what i watched this when it came out and it wasn't in theaters or anything but i enjoyed it a lot but I was a skinny child, Scott. Uh, one would call me scrawny for the majority of my life until after um, after high school. That That's when I started to... I needed this then, not before, you know? Because I was like, <laughs> you know, at the fat kids. I'm like, so Never. We watched it entirely differently then. You were a, a little skinny asshole, apparently, <laughs> laughing at all those fatties. And we were just like, well, if only we could be like you. <laughs> yeah, I would have been on camp MVP. That's what I would have been one of the assholes. Although I was really actually nice in real life, but just for the sake of uh, your comparison, yeah, I would have been on camp MVP. Gotcha. So what do you so you did watch this when you were younger? What did what were some of the things that you remembered before the rewatch? Ben Stiller, of course. I think that was my first exposure to him and he's fucking brilliant in this movie <laughs> um and then but but you know i have a great movie memory so certain lines certain the way uh like when josh talks about he's like oh, i've been shaving a couple of years that's been etched in my brain for some reason because i was like i i don't shave not yet you know that was the one thing i was like you fucking lucky fat bastard you could shave <laughs> <laughs> you lucky fat bastard <laughs> Because now all we wish is that the hair would stop growing in places like that. So we didn't have to shave. No. <laughs> no are you um, still wishing? Are you not able to grow, grow magnificent beards? No, not really. I mean, I uh, the best I can give you is like a, the five o'clock shadow look. Oh, yeah, okay. It. Yeah, yeah. It's Damn. supposed to be sexy, but... Yeah. Someday, maybe he'll grow it out for us in the Mind Reels episode, and we'll be able to look at his luxurious... We'll, we'll give it a tug and see how it does. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, let's, let's dive into the movie, okay? We, we've seen it when we were children. You a little bit younger than I was, but uh, heavier than I was. So now, let's travel back to 1995, Scott, and uh, start at the beginning of the film which is the last day of school. People are trashing the fucking <laughs> hall. My God, my God. The school bell rings and people are just throwing any paper they could find. I don't, there has to be just, was it part of the deal that the end of the school year, you had to save up all the paper homework from the year and throw it at the end? Because I, did, I, I also was kind of like confused. Was this a visual joke? Like, was this supposed to be as funny as it seems where paper and garbage is just falling for the first three minutes of this movie nonstop? I loved it. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it was, it was good. I'm, uh, the janitors didn't like it. That's their fucking black Friday. You know what I mean? <laughs> the janitors <laughs> didn't like it and black Friday. Sorry. I'm repeating, but I just find that so funny. I find Vince to be a humorous fella. Right back at you, sport. Um, so we have to, okay. So the, uh, we meet our main 
protagonist, right? Right. What is Jerry he doing? With a G. What is our yes? But what is our first impression of Jerry? He is a little pervert because <laughs> he walks outside, and the first thing that you see is kind of just this jock and cheerleader going at it, like oh, you know, as as we used to do with the cheerleaders back in uh, after school. But no, like the first thing let's talk about their perspective the first thing they want to do after school's over is just make out horny little shits <laughs> no, i mean we used to be like that anyway yeah. back to our main character though jerry was walking out he 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 her and he just stares at these this couple kissing who are full-on making out and he doesn't stare just a quick glance and then move on with his life. He, he walks out and stares for at least four to five seconds. And that doesn't sound like a long time, but if you count it out, that's a long stinking time, Vince. Like, check it out. Like, pretend I'm the couple and I'm going to count it out. <laughs> long time. Long time to make out or long time to look at people making out? Are you one of those guys who are like, enough, babe? Enough. Right. After five seconds of making out, I'm over it. Let's get to the end. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So so what I'm about to say, because this is the opening, you have the song, um, some popular song at the time. Um, and then Everybody I, I believe... wants to be closer to free. Is it free? Okay. What do you what do you think it was? I've closer know. to P. It did sound like P. <laughs> okay, well, what I'm getting at is during this moment where you, you see the character walking and we get a little glimpse of who he is, none of this has to do with being fat. That's the first thing I noticed. He's a pervert. He likes to watch. <laughs> you know, hey, you know what? He, he misses the bus because he was being a pervert. Yes, exactly. It has nothing to do with being overweight. Next, he's uh, uh, he has to throw a baseball, right? They're like, kid, help, you know? And he can't throw a baseball. That has nothing to do with being fat. I mean, look at Babe Ruth. He made that shit work, right? Right? And then he gets, like, barked at by a dog. That has nothing to do with being chubby. <laughs> the kid, right? Maybe the dog hated fat people. I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it did. We don't know that dog's mentality, Vince. Don't That's put... True. Don't, don't put your thoughts into that dog's mind. Uh, okay, so all that stuff happens, but then we're finally able to see... Oh, also, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. I just wanted to mention that the kid's are, uh, kind of starting to be an asshole because he goes up to that lemonade stand and gives him like $2 and then drinks the whole pitcher of lemonade because he's wore out from not throwing a baseball well and getting barked at. Like, what? Sorry, your little perverted... You know, how long did he actually stand and watch those people make out? Maybe he was standing there the entire time and got so thirsty because he was anyway. But this isn't painting a picture for someone I want to root for, I guess, is my thought process. Exactly. Like, our main character sucks. <laughs> uh, OK, so he finally gets to, back to his house. The fucking music's done and his parents are waiting for him with uh, uh, that actor something. I don't remember. Uh, Jeffrey Tambor. Well, that's his dad. That's cool. But the guy waiting for him, like Blake Nelson, something Blake Nelson. Oh, I don't know who that person is. But he doesn't he come off kind of creepy? Like, hi, hey, Jerry, you want to go to a camp? You know, he's like super smiley and almost like uh, brainwashed or something like that. It's, it's super weird. And I'm like, interesting Cause, choice. Because how the... Because how the camp actually is at this point is a very fun, cool place to be. And like you said, he is coming off very strangely. Yeah. Like, yeah. why and, would you send then, this person? Right. So we'll have that part. And then uh, jumping forward just a little bit, when he actually arrives, remember that kid with the stick? He's like, uh-uh. You know, he's just kind of going like that, kind of freaking him out. That doesn't tie in. Camp Hope is actually nice up to that point. So, yeah, there's some flaws in the movie, Scott, and we we see through them, right? <laughs> That's what you get with these detailed responses from us. Don't you fuck around 25 years ago because we'll come at your ass. <laughs> um, okay, so so he puts in the tape, 
and he's watching it. It looks like a cool ass fucking camp. And then he realizes, wait a minute, it's a fat camp. Uh, crazy shit. Uh, not crazy. Sorry, shit. No, I was just okay. kind of, I was just kind of looking over my notes real quick because I'm li- like, he's watching the tape and he, there's this thing called the blob that sits in the water, and if you jump on it, it like pops you off of the blob into the water. You fly you off into the air. And then there's go karts, and Jerry's sitting there like, <laughs> and I'm like right there with him i'm going <laughs> yes can i is this a place now and can i sign up as an adult i i could you know present myself as a fat adult if i needed to <laughs> i all i would have to do is just let, take my shirt off but do they not that i would want to go to fat camp? camp with children is there fat adult camps it's like the biggest loser well that was a show i guess sorry we're it turns out unhealthy healthy. Uh, uh. <laughs> it's a camp to lose weight and jerry is pissed jerry with the g i, I can't get over that <laughs> well we must move forward uh please try and get over the the g part so uh, there's a little bit of a sitcom sort of beat uh, uh where he's like i'm not going to a fat camp and that's final and then he's on you know on the airplane going to fat camp right well, it was a little dated humor i i felt Record but scratch. Yes. <laughs> Hold on, I'm trying to like. <laughs> That's not a good rest. Forget it. Oh, it's lovely, Scott. Oh my gosh. Uh, just make sure to include a picture of a, a record being <laughs> okay. scratched. It's already been done, so don't even worry about it. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, so the the uh, flight attendant comes up. She's like, "Hey, cutie pie! Like the captain likes you," and gives him the captain uh, wings or whatever. Um, which, of course, apparently happens to like all the kids, right? Isn't that a thing? Never happened to me, but I, I wasn't I wasn't a kid on a plane ever. So that's true. I, I don't have that experience. I was never a child on a plane as well. I didn't take my first flight till mid twenties. Yeah, Oops. and. Okay, so he gets those wings. That's eventually going to be his name. I actually forgot that his name was Jerry. I was just like, eh, it's Captain. Uh, uh, that's how I felt. Uh, no, ever since I saw it was Jerry with the G, I was like, Captain Schmaptain. They're going to call you Jerry with the G. Gross. <laughs> how about gross uh, with the G? We got, we got to call him something else. Uh, we can't agree on his name. We're going to have to call him something else. But We can call him... Come- Either or, because his name is Jerry and his nickname is Captain. So I think the viewers at this point will be able to handle the two names for him. It's going to be okay. Stay with us. His name's Jerry and his nickname's Captain. You'll overestimate the audience. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay, so uh, in comes Keenan Thompson of all that, Good Burger, and now SNL for the past fucking 13 years yes i will never get enough keenan thompson so to see him here i'm immediately just like i feel like someone's welcoming me and welcoming me welcoming me in with open arms being like hey this is a safe trip this is a good movie we got your buddy in here so this movie's gonna be good um but his deliver he comes up and he's like head to fat camp and jerry's like no why do you say that and then he's like because you're fat and his delivery on this line just is why he is in movies and TV is because he's so good. I can't speak enough good things about Keenan Thompson and I love him this entire movie. Yeah. Uh, he, he is very good. His name's Roy. I'm just going to call him Keenan or good burger. I don't know. One of those things uh, or knuckle puck. There's so many options. Um, okay. So let's get back on the ground. The bus shows up. We meet Pat, the fucking counselor, which, by the way, is cool. I, uh, you know, I've only seen him as Fraser's manager, but it's a good role. I think he 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 does it well. Uh, I think he's as positive as he's trying to portray. And I don't know. I, I don't think he really got any juicier parts than this. This is probably his biggest role. I don't remember him from anything else. So to me. This is his juiciest role. You know, I don't, I don't remember. I didn't ever saw Frazier, so I'm not familiar with that. So to me, he is Pat. And Pat is, to me, 
a confident, cool adult. And that's what you're hoping to run into as a kid. And I'm still working on that, trying to be that for the kids out there in the world. Um, but maybe someday I'll be a good old Pat for some kid out there. Yeah, man. Um, I actually had the chance to work as a cam counselor, um, but uh, I, I saw the ad before. And you said, no way. <laughs> Fuck that. Ooh. No, I, I would totally be a Pat as long as there, uh, there's a nurse Julie there waiting for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaking of which, okay, so they finally arrive and we meet, get to meet Tim, the ex fatty, right? He lost weight. Ah, uh, yes. Sorry, yes. you're jumping ahead here. I'm trying to come up a little towards where you're at. Oh, God. I, I go into detail, man. There are certain lines where I like that I'm like, I got to write that down. When they're on the trip, oh, they're driving through on the bus. He's like, he yells back to one of the campers, hey, Sam, don't stick your head out the window. We lost six kids like that last summer. I'm not <laughs> going to pick up your head. And I'm just like, <laughs> This guy is so funny. It's a it's a quote like that that makes me immediately on this guy's side no matter what because he's so just humorous with these kids, but at the same time he's being stern of like put your head in the goddamn bus, you know, or it'll be sliced off, and we don't right. want that. Nobody wants that. And the psych out to like going through a drive a drive through. Oh yes, that was nice. That was a funny one. Hey, doesn't this um, kid look like Andy Milanakis? Oh, the guy, uh, the guy with the glasses. Yeah, I could have yeah. swore that was Andy Milanakis, but I looked it up and it it doesn't say that it's him. Well, I thought the kid with the braces was Pugsley from the Adams Family, but he's not. But I grew up watching that movie, th thinking like, good for Pugsley. He's a, he's he's another shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> apparently we've been deceived in all likes of children and what they grow up to be but uh like you said we're introduced to nurse julie pat likes her so if pat likes her then i like her <laughs> yeah but he he he's offered the chance to show her around and he's like i i don't know where the 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 affirm uh, yeah. i don't know you know <laughs> he instantly strikes out man with a woman who could pop i mean from what I can tell, she is a chubby chaser, man. They do exist out there, Scott. <laughs> okay. Uh, she ends up being a chubby chaser, but I don't think she's she gave off any vibes immediately besides just being cute that she was into Pat. She Did plays she? it cool. She played it too know, cool. Because she is cool. And that's why Pat likes her. Not just because <laughs> she's pretty. She's obviously pretty. Well, why didn't she? Why didn't she go for Lars though? If you don't think she's a chubby chaser, answer that. Because Lars is an asshole, <laughs> immediately and throughout forever, until the end. Actually, he comes around because he's threatened. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so I, I like the little back and forth. I do remember thinking before I watched it, there was some kind of being a fat guy going after a cute girl and being scared of that. And I didn't remember, I thought it was with one of the kids, but it turned out to be Pat, which made me like it even more because now I'm like 34 year old single dude going, oh, maybe some girl out there is a chubby chaser and she'll be okay to come after a guy, a fella like me. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, her dad was probably fat. That's what I'm, that's what I'm guessing. <laughs> oh, where <laughs> Why are we even talking about this? We what the hell? <laughs> All right. I don't know. So. I don't know. Okay. Okay. So next week we go into the cabin, uh, chipmunks, the which chipmunk is the main. Monk. Yes, the the main group that we're gonna see throughout the movie because there's like a bunch of people in this camp, but we're only gonna see from the perspective of uh, chip the chipmunks. There we meet Josh, who is from fucking. Uh, what's his name? Was he Goldberg? He was Goldberg from... and the Mighty Ducks, and he was oh. always my favorite. Always my favorite. That's and all I have to say. Terrific about him at this yeah, moment. He, he... <laughs> no, he's awesome. He's he's freaking awesome in this movie. Um, he's the one who's like, hey, we'll we'll call, we'll call you captain and shit like that. And I think it's because he just like gives off that 
you know, cocky energy of like, or that confidence of, Hey, we're here. Let's have fun. Like we got you. You're one of us now type thing. And I just I'm like, Josh, take captain on your wings. <laughs> uh captain says hey man um i brought some some candy or whatever and he's like oh yeah chipmunks download and that's when they fucking like the hollowed out uh posts of the bunk and like there's a big hole in the ground and uh people got shit strapped to them like fucking dynamite but yes, it's like baloney yes. and stuff like that uh i was gonna mention uh one of the kids has salamis taped to it like duct tape to his back and I just love the fact that some kid brought some salami. Like he's like, "Oh, I I gotta get snacks." Hey, do we have foot long salamis that I can strap on real quick? Oh, I love it. Oh, uh, that's yeah. It's it's so weird. Um, real quick, um, this reminds me. That one time I had a roommate who was a a heavier set gal. You know, real cool. Um, but I remember one day I was locked out of my uh, locked out of the house. And I didn't have my key on me. I was drunk as shit. And I was like, oh, God, I got to break into my own place. But only her window was up, was unlocked. So I crawl in there. And when I'm in there and I fall down to the floor, I look under her bed is like a case of cookies. <laughs> An entire <laughs> box of cookies. I'm like, damn. <laughs> Does she know this story? No. And hopefully she doesn't <laughs> listen to podcasts or watch them. Oh, no, oh, no, no. She's a good, good, she's a good chick, good chick. All right, well, at least she's a good gal. Uh, but they're, so, so they're all taking off candy everywhere. There's a character that has, like, <laughs> he takes off his shirt, but it's all melted to him. And Josh is, like, from the background, hey, grab a taste. <laughs> so the, the kid, like, takes a, his hand and just wipes it across the melted chocolate and licks it. And then they all just dive onto him, just I'm not like eating this melted chocolate off of this little kid. It's so funny to me. Uh, yeah, and and it's the it's the redhead guy with the glasses. Um, he 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 does the first taste, and I'm like, is that the the same guy from Mighty Ducks? Remember there was a redheaded dude with glasses, and yeah, I was yeah. like. He's in here too, just because Keenan and Josh are in this movie, you know. And I think this was right after uh, D two, right? Yeah, it, yeah. it's not the same it's person, not. though, right? It's, right? No, no, it's not. I'm just saying, like when I watched it, I'm like, oh my god, they got everyone. Where's Emilio? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Where's Emilio? <laughs> Emilio. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I heard someone reference that. And I'm like, how many people have seen The Roxbury? And I think that's the only thing people remember is, is the Emilio part. <laughs> yeah, you froze I, up too, Scott. I mean, it's a, it's a great right, moment to remember. It's a great moment. So, okay, by me. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now let's get into the, the little segment of uh, The Blob. We finally get to see that in action. People are like, it's really, it's, it looks fucking fun. I've have never you done ever, the blob. I was going to I was going to say have you ever done the blob because I have not and I was hoping that you would have experienced that because I don't know of a situation to where we'll ever be able to at this point in our lives. In a way I did um that roommate I was mentioning we hooked up once. Oh, that's a terrible joke. All right. Uh so next we get to <laughs> the uh <laughs> the part with the uh under new management. This scene's crazy. Uh, this is where um, Ben Stiller's dad, Jerry Stiller, shows up as one of the old owners. Yes, yes. And he's yes. like, he's like, apparently they got fucked over, like embezzled or something like that. It's actually really sad, and we'll never actually see them afterwards. They're just screwed <laughs> from <laughs> then on. Right, because then they don't even give him a call after they they just give Pat the job. At that point, that's not like, <laughs> yeah. well, let me call these. No, he's just, yeah, that's too bad. But I, yeah. I will mention so that there's a, a great little moment when they do arrive. They're like, hi, uh, hi, uh, hi. Uh. It's just this fun little, because it's, they don't have to put that little stuff in there, but it's like camp. It shows you that it's like camp. It's just nice. I liked it. Have you ever been to a camp? I never have, no. So how the fuck do you know? <laughs> <I'm kidding>. uh, 
<laughs> I, I, I've been to camps um, or a camp, not official or whatever, but yeah, there's they're they're loads of fun, man. So this is you're you're exactly right. They're 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 you know conjuring those feelings of like, oh, this is awesome. So this is all to build up because they're like old owners are like new management. I'm sorry, and here he is. In comes fucking Tony Perkis, Ben Stiller in one of his best roles ever uh, with with a camera, Kenny the Cameraman, and all these like fucking fit elite fucking people and shit like that. And uh, this is where he's like, I'm here to make uh, an infomercial, right? Or a video. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. yeah, he's making an infomercial because he mentioned infomercial because later on he mentions about how it's going to be the end of the infomercial uh, infomercial at the uh, at like two a.m. in the morning or something. So yeah, it's a uh, he's trying to get that money. Right, right. Um, Kenny, the cameraman, he's a uh, an old standby of uh, Adam Sandler movies. He was in Grandma's Boy and shit like that. Alan Covert, we love you. And that's his name. That's sweet. Never knew. Um, okay, so so he's there, and he's he mentions how he's been privately tutored all his life, and he's like, "I'm I'm so eager to finally interact with children." <laughs> I so love he's this. just been. <laughs> I love it because he's like, "Oh, I've never interacted with children. I'm gonna buy a camp and have that be my first time." What? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah, he's going to be completely detached and there'll be glimpses of him referring to his messed up childhood. Even at the end when the dad shows up, he's like, yeah, yeah, sure. I never held him, but you don't see me whining and complaining or something like that, you know? So you do kind of feel like that is the main thing when he says, I've been privately tutored my whole life. Is He has no idea how to interact with people, never mind children. I just think in, with people in general. Yeah. Um, so one of the best parts is like, he's like, yeah, and he like runs down to get, <laughs> no, no one reaches out. It's, it's a great, it's a, one of those images that burned in my mind over the years. Um, okay. So now this is the beginning of the end for the camp where Lars introduces himself to Pat. And he's like, you're fucking in the big house now, or you're in the big log cabin and you're basically not even a counselor anymore you, you'll see pat just cleaning shit mowing lawns and raking and stuff like that it's it's really kind of like oh what the fuck it's a nice turn this this movie starts to get shitty it's so good yeah, but yeah um, so okay. lars lars comes into the picture he he places himself in the chipmunk bunk we just see him snoring everybody hates him because of it and this is where I start to kind of hate the kids a little bit because I'm a snore. And I'm like, if they hate Lars, they would hate me too. And I don't mean to snore. It's just part of me. Yeah. Again, that has, that, sh that shouldn't have anything to do. I guess I want everything to, to mean something because it's like, well, do fat kids just hate snoring? No. You know, if you snore, you might not like, I don't know. I, I always felt like that was a weird thing they threw in there i'm like yeah so he snores but um wait wait do you have a deviated septum like lars no i'm just uh overweight and that helps people snore i guess oh really yeah holy shit how do you know you snore people say it uh pretty much anytime i ever stay anywhere they're like oh my gosh you're like totally snoring so loud and i'm like I'm so sorry. Please don't hate me. <laughs> oh, Lars, we don't hate you. <laughs> You're oh. just foreign. All right. Uh, so let's get to the morning. This is where it starts, where he's like, uh, Tony's on the on the speaker. And he's like, okay, it's a valuation. Do you have value? <laughs> Which is a really fucked up thing to say. He's like, no, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to be privy to a, a little bit of a montage where they're sliding um, they're falling down. Things are wacky and crazy. Uh, they're going to have a weigh in. Um, yeah, that's about it. I guess if, uh, 
Lars. Oh, the next thing I have is Lars in the in the buddy system. He hits on uh, Julie or tries to. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. That's pretty much it. Uh, I mean, he like comes out just pushing kids into the water. <laughs> He's like, huh, huh, hey, how's it going? <laughs> and she is not into it, which makes us like her even more because she's got a heart of gold. Yeah. Uh, but, okay. All right. All right. I- I'm just saying, I mean, Chubby Chaser. Lars isn't a bad looking dude, you know? And no, from what I can tell. He's also, he's pushing children into water and without their even knowledge. At a summer he, camp? No. How is he not a bad dude? It's not, listen, like it's not because he's pushing them into water. It's because they don't like him and he's aggressively pushing them into the water. It's not a fun like, he he got you. And they're looking back going, oh, Lars. He is going, Hurr! and they're going, oh, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be Lars advocate for a second here because he's like, uh, you know, I got them on the body system, which is a good system. Are you going to mention it? Like, okay. So the fact that he's pushing them in, he could be thinking, oh, this is going to connect me with the kids. This is fun for everybody. I'm being playful and still doing my job because I have him on the buddy system. God damn it, you just convinced me that he's a good guy and I want him to end up with Julie. He is a good guy. Remember, he turns. He's actually kind of cool at the end. So I, I feel like there's a lot of hatred. I mean, you just sided with me about the snoring thing. You're like, <laughs> well, how could you hate him because he snores? They're, they're, it's kind of superficial, like, oh, we're just meant to hate Lars because he's foreign. Accent, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's justified. You know really. what? We're Lars fans. Because he yeah. even dresses up at the very end, and that's very fun. And at the dance, he's the only one who's into it. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. We love Lars. We never knew. <laughs> we never knew. All right. So next, um, I just have this written down. It's the baseball scene where Camp MVP shows up. Um, and then... Um, they have yeah, there's some baseball to, comedy. Pat tries to convince the coach to take it easy on him. The coach refuses. And then you know it's the typical, oh, my arm got hit by the ball. Oh, my face got hit by the ball. Oh, my nuts got hit by the ball. So that's pretty much <laughs> what this scene consisted of. I'm not saying I didn't laugh every time. I did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because it is always good humor. Um, but yeah, it just kind of hits the normal stops of, they're good. We're bad. Yeah, it's a. Um, I, I do appreciate the one physical comedy of Sam. I think his name is the one with the braces, who I thought was Pugsley, where he like misses and then the baseball bat flies up, or goes over and hits himself in the head. <laughs> that was a nice little. Yes. Good physical comedy, uh, and then there's like a line for the nurse. Like at, they're all lined up with you know skin knees and shit like that. Um, but yeah, that's the end of that. Uh, so on to the part where Tony, okay, so Tony's searching the cabin and he already kind of knows some of the tricks. He's like tapping, look, you know, trying to hear for like the hollowed pegs and stuff like that. And, uh, I think he does. Yeah. He does find something and Roy says something to him, Keenan. And he's like, I'm not a bad guy. Come here. Hug me. Come over here. (laughs) Come on. (laughs) And Keenan's like, all right. He hugs him, and then he it starts to frisk him and finds a Pez dispenser. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, he's packing heat. And he, the way he unloads it. Dude, they put a sound effect in where it was like metal bullets hitting the ground. <laughs> it was amazing. It was Perfect. so good. Um, okay, and then uh, so he, he calls uh, Jerry up. He's like, hey, you, you there. And he's looking at him and he's got these cards. He's just trying to match the face. It's like, <laughs> Gerald, uh, age 11, you know, stuff like that. Tell me who did this, you know, because whoever did this is not your friend, which I'm going to give him some love. It's true. The whole point is for them to lose weight, correct? Well, I mean, it's labeled a fat camp. But before he came there, it was supposed to be a different... I guess the parents did think that they were going to go there and have their weight managed. So, yes, he's not wrong in this situation. 
Yeah, and they don't lose weight during this movie. Yeah, they just have fun. Or even if even if Tony wasn't there, they would have just been having fun, you know, being on the blob, going on go-karts, this and that. They wouldn't have been focused on their weight at all. So it would have really just been a summer away, which isn't a bad thing, but it's not what the parents signed up for. They it's not what up, they paid for. Yeah. Yeah. Like that would be annoying. And and just think <laughs> just think about this. Think of think of all the kids that would eventually get diabetes and shit. Just because they're like, we went to this camp and it was fun and we gained weight. It was great. I'm not on yeah. no, fuck that. I'm not on the side of the, yours right now. <laughs> Sorry. Let them, I, I, let them go to their true. camp. Let them go to their camp, have their fun, and then come home. I mean, they're far away from home. They're already scared. They don't have they shouldn't be scared about their weight as well. <laughs> okay. Um I, oh I, I forgot to mention this. One of the old campers, he's like, he's now a counselor. He's like, uh, hey man, uh uh Tim, I was a uh, I was a, in chipmunks last year. So that's when he knows about the secret hole in the floor and shit like that. That guy, I don't I think he's in other shit. I can't point him, but he's got like the spiky blonde hair in like all the movies that he's been in, I think. Um, but he's also the guy who is getting paid to smuggle in food. Which yeah, it was strange. It was like he was because he looks familiar, like you were saying, but maybe this was one of the ploys that he had to do to like, Hey, I'm on your side. So see all this candy I just smuggled in for you. You don't have to think of that, that I'm going to be doing anything bad. So he was getting just doing this as kind of like a facade of being like being a follower to their ideals. To uh, Tony's to Tony's right. ideals. So then they wouldn't suspect him of bringing in stuff. I also on our side, this kid is. He yeah, he eventually sides with uh, the other campers, but he's also like, I'm gonna get rid of I'm gonna create the demand because eventually I'm gonna get paid this summer for the supply. So really that was a huge move for him. He probably had all this shit figured out as soon as he realized that fucking uh, what's his name was gonna take over the shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's like, I'll dump out all the candy and then I'm going to fucking make some good money this summer. You know, even even fucking Pat is paying for paying him for like Oreos and shit. It's great. I'm just saying this guy should have got a name. I don't know if he's ever. I don't know <laughs> if he got a name. <laughs> OK, OK, so this is the best part. This was the part that made me sit up and I, and I kind of remembered this. This moment where, like, you know, uh, Tony's pressuring Jerry to, like, okay, who was it? He's not your friend. Who, who, who was it? And then finally, Josh is like, hey, man, because he, he doesn't like Jerry getting picked on. Josh is so fucking cool this way. He comes and he's like, I I'll tell you who it was. It was, it was Seymour Butts. And, you know, that's a big, like, they're laughing at him and shit. And Ben Stiller's like, oh, you, you don't want to cross me or something like that, right? Or you don't want to mess with me. He's like, oh, I didn't realize I was messing with with a man or something, or something like that. No, no, like, yeah. you, you forgot the whole part. He's oh. as he gets him, he's like, who sees more butts? And he's like, nobody sees more butts than you, Uncle Tony. And that's what really pisses him off because he knows he's been God at that point. Right. So then yeah. he, he's like, nobody crosses me. And actually, it was so fucking stupid because. He, he goes, hey, I like comedians. Perhaps I can book you on a tour. And that was his ending line. And he leaves. Everything with Tony Perkins is so funny because it's shit like that said so seriously, but it, it doesn't quite line up to with, with his own expectations of what he's saying. All right. Uh, so, so we're left with like Josh just laughing. And he's like, ah, and then freeze frame fade out fade back in and it's an empty bed with his mattress rolled up in a pillow and everyone's like where the fuck is josh and to me i was like holy shit this is huge for me that should have been the last time we saw josh for it to fully take effect 
You know what I mean? That 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 Ben still got so mad that he fucking got rid of him. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, it I'm creates, glad he comes back. It creates a very hilarious montage of like what happened to Josh, <laughs> and the kids are like, "I heard that he's living with a guy in New York that has no legs. I heard he's blah blah blah." But then Peter Berg has a cameo. One of the he's a director, and he has a cameo as the cook, and he says he delivers my favorite line. He's like, "Well." Well, he's dead. <laughs> just, just that. Um, right, yeah. That guy looked familiar. So he's a director? Yeah, he directed I, I, uh, Very Bad Things, Battleship, Pain and Gain. These are all movies oh, that probably... Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, he, <laughs> he's directed better, like Lone Survivor was a hit movie. He did that one. That was a good one. Hmm. All right, maybe open up with that instead of pain and gain. And yeah, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> At <okay>. least stinkers. <laughs> I'd be like, is, stick to cooking. This is when the movie like gets even darker, though. They kill the blob. They dismember the go karts. Tony cancels lunch due to the lack of hustle. <laughs> and then, like, that's one of those lines. I, I uh, sorry, but due to a lack of hustle and then he just shrugs i've always remembered that line and that little like you know like you know, they're gonna go <laughs> hungry or whatever like that that's one of those things where it's like i just always even if i didn't remember it was from heavyweights i just remember those certain moments i don't know it's weird but yeah then after um, that, jerry you know he's writing his grandma telling him all that stuff and it's the dance man it's all about the dance you kind of miss a little bit part of that little montage where he's writing, you know, like they eventually, uh, he, he says like, things are terrible. Uh, we're vandalized by camp MVP. They fly by and say, you suck, you suck. And I'm like, what does that have to do with Tony camp MVP are assholes anyways? I don't know. There's a, it's a good movie, but the writing isn't as polished as it should be. There's just some things here and there. Well, he's right. His grandma. He's telling his grandma everything, man. You put it has nothing to. Okay, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. And then uh, the the last thing was like, you know, we're so desperate, and they're like chasing the cow for meat and stuff like <laughs> that. Okay, so next we are at the dance, and uh, this is when uh, Tony purposefully invites the all female camp to come in for that dance, knowing. It was gonna play out like this, and it's just sadistic. <laughs> it's so fucked up, and it's so painful. You know, the girls are all on one side, the guys are all on the other. You know, um, are you familiar with this at all, Scott? Were you the guy who's just kind of leaning against the wall, like you know, fucking posers everywhere, man? I was never made to go to dances as a kid, and so I never really did. I don't have any memory as a kid going to dances like this or this being, and I, maybe this movie scarred me to where I thought that this was what it was going to be like. So I just did not. Yeah. You didn't want, you didn't want uh, the counselors to have to start the whole thing. And oh. <laughs> the piece of flowing and shit like as, that. as fun as that sounds. No, did did you experience dances like this or what? Um, it's, it's, it's pretty typical. Like it takes a while for people to just start, you know, it, and it is kind of awkward. And I myself am not much of a dancer. Uh, not that I can't dance, but I have no need to, uh, you know, I have you no just desire. Like, you to. just like to get paid for it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But it's only while I'm going through college, Scott, right? Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you, and you're about out of college, right? Because you keep taking one class just to, like, continue <laughs> to strip for money. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still <laughs> technically in college, guys. You've been in that one class for how long? <laughs> um, okay, so, again, I, I just want to reiterate, like, uh, you know, when Julie shows up and she's like, hey, Pat, how's it going? And he's kind of like, oh, God, I'm so fucking nervous. But uh, what he does is like, look at Lars. Isn't he stupid? And Lars is dressed up. He's into it and shit like that. 
and I don't know. I just I, I'm like, what's the matter with him? He's got a yeah, large turtleneck. He looks great, actually. Thanks for mentioning that, Pat. And he's having a great time, which you are not. So jealous much? <laughs> full on hate Pat at this moment <laughs> because I love <laughs> Lars so much. I guess. <laughs> Um, okay, so Julie says, like, okay, so this is messed up. I actually have a friend in child welfare, and there has to be something he's doing that's not right. So I'm, you know, I, I should probably bring this up. Um, and then uh, Julie's like, oh, no, uh, Pat is like, oh, my gosh, these these boys, they're, they're too, they're still afraid of women. <laughs> and Julie's like, oh, well, you want to dance? And Pat's like, oh, God, you fucking nervous. I'm like, oh, my tie's too tight. <laughs> I can't. So, yeah. I uh, sprained my hurt. Uh, bottom. Yeah, he's, it's it's good. I like this moment just because he's blaming behavior on the kids that he himself is also going through at the same moment. But that's <laughs> okay, when, so like, is... sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to mention something what the girls say on the other side. Do you have anything written down about that? I do not. Oh my gosh. Okay. So there's three of them and they're like, why would they do this? Like, why would they make us stand here? Like, wh why can't they just lose weight? And the one turns and she's like, oh, well, maybe you could teach them how to throw up afterwards. I'm like, holy fuck. Yeah. That was a cool up. moment. Yeah. Cool. No, cool. We because, bulimic. <laughs> well, no, I'm saying cool. Cause that girl's like calling her out on her shit. Like, Hey, don't be talking shit about these people. If you yourself are going through something, they're going through being overweight. You're going through anorexia. Fuck you. Bulimia. There's a, there's a, sorry. There's a uh, difference. Sorry. Bulimia. Bulimia. <laughs> my point oh my stands is okay. the end. Right. Okay. So you mentioned when you watch this movie, you're like, oh, I'm a fat kid, right? When I was younger, uh, and as, especially in high school, I actually thought I was kind of overweight, but I never was. I was really skinny. I, in fact, had anorexia back in the day, and I didn't know it. It wasn't until, like, afterwards where I, you know, I read up on the subject. I'm like, I did. I, I thought I was kind of overweight. I never was, though. Um, right. Because I remember one time... A girl, uh, a girlfriend of mine. She was like, she's like, oh yeah, something. I just really like scrawny guys or something like that. And I was like, scrawny. And that's when like my eyes cleared and I looked in the mirror and I'm like, oh, I am like really bone skinny. No, so, that's yeah. wild. That. <laughs> How old were you when that happened? Like when you had when that I, revelation? Um, fifteen or sixteen, something like that. So I, I, uh, I had that shit. So imagine how hard it is now knowing I am overweight. You know? uh -huh. yes. hey. And you wonder why I drink. Hey. I'll tell you what. I'm surprised we don't have a bunch of commenters in there going, what a cutie pie. Because this motherfucker cutie pie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anyways, um, <laughs> There is another scene though. Let's wipe where... the blushing off your face. Sorry, you're blushing a bit. <laughs> Let me get that. <laughs> okay, so this scene, <laughs> I thought this girl was kind of mean to do this. She like just you know walks away from the crowd right up to the guys, and the guys are like, "Oh my gosh!" Jeez, she's coming over. What's happening? And it's like slow motion. She's backlit and stuff like that, and she's like. Hi, do you know where the bathroom is? And they're all like, slowly turn, point to the bathroom. That's right behind them. I feel like she clearly knew where the bathroom was, but this was a typical mean girl move. And uh, yeah, I didn't really care for her. You forget she's also a child and child, child's children are fucking stupid. They're not thinking beyond what they're doing, man. She probably went, Oh, I'm about to piss my panties. I gotta go find this bathroom very soon. <laughs> no, 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 no. Who might know? These fat guys might, since this is their camp. That's all they there was to this. Piss. No, I, okay. I have to. I have to disagree. What I meant by she, she. Uh, okay, when you said, "Oh, she's a child. She didn't know what she was doing." 
I assumed that you said you you were agreeing with me, like, yeah, she did this on purpose, but she didn't realize just how fucking cruel that was to to a young boy. Like you 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 get all these young men, like, oh my god, are you looking at me? And she's like, yeah, I have to fucking pop a squat. Where's the shitter, you fucks? You know. But after this, she's seen dancing with all the other kids as well, so she's not i don't think she's doing anything malicious with the intent to be malicious she okay she she actually dances with jerry yeah but i would if i was jerry i'd be like but she doesn't know. give him a hand job so she's a bitch <laughs> no no okay That's i where you're i have a thing called pride and it has hurt me several times in terms of getting laid like if a girl like slights me once but then a year later she's like you're actually kind of cute now because you went through puberty i'm like back off bitch <laughs> and that's what i felt like jerry should have done like if she was like you want to dance and he's like bathrooms are over there remember that <laughs> <laughs> bathrooms are over there <laughs> Oh my gosh. No, this is exactly why we are miserable people. All right. Because we can't get over the small stuff like that. I'm happy that Jerry got over that. All right. I want to be right. like Jerry. I want to get over small, stupid shit, but I can't. I latch on to it just like you. <laughs> All right. So finally, um, Tim has enough of this. He's the skinny guy. And so he's just like, fuck this. He goes up and he just starts dancing. And uh, Pat is like, stop, you're embarrassing me. But then he slowly realizes, <laughs> I over-exaggerate just how nervous <laughs> Nelly he is. But eventually he realizes that uh, Julie will probably like this because he kind of looks at her and is like, mm -hmm. so he jumps in there. And Guys, come on. They see how much fun we're having. They'll join in. It'll be contagious. And he starts dancing as well. Julie joins them. And then the the dudes, the boys do. And finally, the fucking girls get in on it. And it's actually really kind of fun. You know, I was getting swept up in it. And right then, that's when Ben Stiller shows up, shuts the whole fucking thing down. His, his you know, his plan didn't work. And I'm like, what a bastard. Like, this was a, oh, just the, the change up was so good to me. Oh. And he's like, put away the fruit trays. The insect tree will be out soon or something like that. <laughs> this is just another moment of a line being said by him that's supposed to be like super something, but then it's so what? <laughs> you put the fruit trays away, the insects will be out soon. You're supposed to be a villain and you're saying <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> it honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Ben Stiller just improv all his lines, you know? Yeah. Because honestly, like, he is the best part of this. Yeah. I agree. I agree. And it's such, like, if you added up all the minutes of the movie of him in it, it'd probably be 15 minutes. But I'm just sitting there waiting for his next moment where he's going to say something like that. Was that, was this your first Ben Stiller movie? Probably without even knowing it, because I don't even think I realized it until years later that, that it was him. Because you don't watch movies like that as a kid. You're just kind of like, oh, this is what I'm watching. Then <laughs> later on, yeah. All but, right. So, yeah. I was just going to say this brings us to one of the nicer scenes of the movies. Right after this moment, you know, Jerry's upset. He's sitting there in this broken down go-kart. And then Pat walks up and he's uh, they talk about how like the place stinks now and it didn't used to always be like that. Jerry's like, I've never ridden a go-kart. I'm so slow. It would have been nice to be going fast. And I'm like, oh, and then Pat's like, you know what? You're about to go fast off tonight, boy. <laughs> Jumps behind him. <laughs> like starts running around this go-kart course with them and just it's such a fucking cool beautiful moment between this adult male and this 
young kid who, you know, like they're kind of looking up to each other, I guess, is how I look at this, because there's a scene not too long after this where Jerry like reminds Pat of who he is and what he's doing. And that's right, right, right. helping these kids. So it was just kind of a, it's one of my favorite. It's one scene that kind of stuck out to me when I watched it again, I went, Oh my God, this is bringing back so many emotions I had when I was a kid watching this movie because it's a, it's a cool moment. Oh, for sure. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the, the cynical man in me now uh, noticed this where he's like looking around and I'm sure he saw in his peripheral, oh, Julie's got to watch this. <laughs> She's out on her balcony. <laughs> She's going to get so wet. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to get so wet. You know, now that you say that, I didn't notice that he was like looking around. I did. I mean, they did have the clips of her kind of watching and she's pretty lit up. So there's no way he missed her being over there. So he's not being good for to be for like to be a good guy. But we know he is a good guy. So it's OK. We'll give him a pass. Well, at least I will. OK, uh, so next uh, it's at night and uh, Jerry's sleeping and then you, we see a silhouette arrive at the door the door opens and josh is there he's like stumbling like you know kind of babbling but like looking up and shit this is straight up from what movie what are, what are they parodying do you know i have no idea because i love this moment in this movie i have no idea josh um was bad josh now good <laughs> that was <laughs> awesome and then when he like, <laughs> like that's <laughs> Let me just get this out of the way. The the Josh, that actor, is fucking hilarious. He was in The Mighty Ducks. He was in this. Um, I know he was in a lot of sitcoms. I remember that. He was in, like, Mr. Rhodes and the Tony Danza show and shit like that. Um, none of those shows went anywhere. But, uh, yeah, good guy. Awesome, awesome talent. But, anyways, this movie, or the scene is parroting the scene in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I didn't know that at the time when I was a kid. So I was just like, what happened to Josh? You know? <laughs> I've never seen that movie, so that makes sense why I've, I didn't see the reference. Uh, apparently the one kid got the reference. The lobotomy. Maybe not. He just assumed, I guess. But uh, when Josh snaps out of it and he's like, hey, man, what's going on? They're like, so what happened? He's like, well, basically, my dad's a lawyer. And when uh, Tony kicked me out with our... Uh, a uh, re uh, money back, you know, my dad fucking kicked it in high gear, threatened him, and now he's back. Um, again, awesome to see him back, but it would have been so much more impactful if he never did return, you know? Uh, I just don't like to s how the movie would play out without him, though. I feel like he has so many more scenes where it's great with him being there. Oh, I agree. I'm, I wouldn't yeah. want him to not be there for those scenes. Right, right. Uh, but still, I'm just like, I kind of took away from that moment where I'm like, he fucking killed him or something like that? Like, You still like, get the moment. You just don't get to think he's dead anymore, which why do you want to think that in this beachy movie? <laughs> <laughs> because he's fat. Oh. <laughs> and I am not one of you guys, man. <laughs> I have accepted it. Accept your fate with us now. <laughs> you are one of us. All right, fine. Pass the chips. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, okay. So, after the next day, they decide to break into Tony's cabin while he's out running. Um, and they're, they're going to just look for candy, basically, right? Right. Yeah. But what do they find, Scott? Ooh, they find something even worse. Well, I mean, just something bad, which is their letters, all their letters, which is looking like 150 letters between the eight of them. No, 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 no. <laughs> remember, remember, this is just one. Oh, right. This is the one bunk. Is the yeah, we, we tend bunk. to. Yeah, we tend. The movie just focuses on the chipmunks, but there's all the everyone's letters are in that thing. So, yes. yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and then they also come across a photoshopped poster 
Jerry's face on a skinny kid, <laughs> and like Tony's like has him on his shoulders and shit. It's hilarious. Um, okay, but then Tony starts to show up, and I'm like, oh my god. Uh, and then they have to go back for Nicholas, who's eating peanut butter and shit. Why? Why? Why am I writing this? This is there's a lot of things where I'm like, oh yeah, that happens. They yeah, barely well, speak, I mean, but I do. I'm the same thing because I'm like, okay, so then Jerry pushes Nicholas out the window, and then boom fart to the face oh. <laughs> nicholas farts in his face tony hears the fart he starts to walk come in and he's like i just heard he's like like sniffing the air so i'm writing all the same stupid notes down like that we don't necessarily need to talk about but it's a good moment of the movie it's funny it's in there so why not but the <laughs> fact is they do get away but then they hear a kid with some rapping of maybe perhaps food related items. Yes, the kick in the bathroom stall, and there's Where'd some guy. I that? think it's the redheaded dude. I found right? it. Yeah, and he's like, "Uh, I found this." <laughs> but that kicks off the whole. We see that there's this whole other side of the camp where people are getting food stuck in through a tree stump, which I guess is awesome, but. <laughs> unfortunate for our chipmunk crew for, for unfortunate well because they gain weight well unfortunate because they didn't know about it until this time all right yeah and this is being run by the the ex chipmunk the the betrayer you know the one who was like hey man here, here's their secret stash but yeah this is him just fucking making that money and stuff like that um even pat is in on it he he pays for food and shit like that so next we have the weigh-ins and uh this is where uh tony is still recording you know he's he he puts it on like hey what's up and and kenny's like oh we're not recording it he's like well then tell me when we're gonna record shit like that <laughs> i love the ups and downs the oh, manic yes. ups, and ups and downs <laughs> it's good uh so yeah they're gonna have weigh-ins but everyone's gonna weigh heavier i think one of my favorite parts was like he calls Josh to get up there. He stands for a second. He's like, okay, get off the f Get off the scale. Okay, then. Turn off the camera. All right. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> um, and he has a little breakdown. <sighs> How you doing, little Tony? Bad. I uh, uh, love everything about that, because then at the end, he's like, that's it! 20-mile hike, which is an insane amount of a hike for anyone, let alone all these kids who just prove they've gained weight at your camp. Oh. Uh, but Pat does try to try to speak up. He's like, "Hey, that's crazy, man." And then what does he say? He's like, uh, "I don't know." He puts him down. You just, uh, you, uh, but, but, I think I, if I, to subject the kids, you know what? And no one really stands up for Pat. They could have all just finally said something, but good old Pat. He's by himself. He tried, uh, which leads to our next scene where Jerry's like, hey, man, at least you tried. And they start yelling at Camp MVP from across the lake, like, you could keep your washboard abs or something like that. <laughs> You're a bunch of jerks. And this is one of the, the scene that I was talking about earlier where Pat was like being there for Jerry and now Jerry's being there for Pat. So it was just kind of fun that they had that back and forth for each other. Yeah. And, and this this moment where they're like, they're jerks. You guys suck. Keep, you know, keep your low blood pressure and, you know, like healthiness and shit. But I also wanted to be like, hey, man, there's some people that is, especially when I was watching it at my age, I was like, well, I'm not fat. I'm not a jerk. And I, I, I dated a, a woman who should, by all accounts, be extremely overweight but she, she never could it was just her fucking metabolism like she ate horribly i ate horribly i gained weight she never did and she would always uh she would get mad for for uh people talking about how skinny she was or whatever and uh remember that uh, there was a movie called real women have curves you, i do you, not you no, have, I, I have no idea what that movie is now it's some fucking random movie in the video store but she was she would always take offense to that. She's like, you know what? People people get you know make fun of the fat, but then 
are you know criticized for it but no one ever criticized people for making fun of the skinny people i'm like you got a point yeah i mean i think people are (laughs) (laughs) i think people are very good about recognizing that nowadays um and kind of calling people out on it at this point but yeah fortunately she had a great ass for you the the entire time um okay so after that uh, after they're yelling um they are kind of thinking like okay well we something has to be done about this tony guy so he so so he says pat tells jerry he's like okay go on the camp go on the hike and make sure everyone's okay meanwhile i'll be back at camp and the adults will think of something we're gonna take this guy down you know so i like this they both have a little bit of a plan so on to the 20 mile hike this is the day when we separate the men from the boys. I, I don't remember the kid who looks like Andy Milanakis, <laughs> yes. right? Because he, he falls, falls down. <laughs> and then Tony Tony shows up and immediately is like, "Leave him. He's a straggler. <laughs> he's, a, he's a straggler. The, the weak must be left to to defend themselves." I was, or something like that. <laughs> Again, that's a reference to his fucked up childhood. Every he'll sprinkle his his because backstory it's, throughout it's, the movie. It's still all so funny, but also giving us his own backstory, which is helpful in us not hating him completely. Because you got to have like some sympathy for your villain, I guess, or at least it's helpful to have some. Yeah, he's fucked up, but you know he probably could have been a normal kid but yeah privately uh tutored all of his life and shit like that um okay so back at camp this is where pat tim and julie are like oh we gotta we gotta think of something like that and kenny happened to show up he's like hey that bastard owes me six hundred dollars so they all look at each other like hmm and so they'll come up with the idea of showing the footage eventually so that's cool right and this is actually one of my favorite scenes that pops up right here where Cody wants to have fun. And then Tony is like, oh, you want to have fun? Great. And then just jumps off the cliff like he's going to kill himself. <laughs> but like jumps on a nearby tree branch and is just hanging off. And then he's like starts doing pull ups. And he's like, hey, Sam, come join me. Sam, why don't you come out and join me? Oh, yeah, I'm on my way. And he's like, oh, I'm on my way. <laughs> but like everything about that is so fucking bonkers and just funny to me. Like I loved it so much. Yeah, oh, oh my I, gosh. Cause then Jerry says something and he's like, we need to do something about this guy. And then it's like, <laughs> and then suddenly Tony is there. Yeah, man. But what? What's that? I missed it. I missed it. Like, oh, we, what we, was just, <laughs> we just need a little rest. <laughs> Right, right. Uh, but but the way they did it, it was just sound effects of flipping. And then, like, <laughs> it was so quick. It was immediate, like, wish, wish, here he is already. No way he could he have flown from that branch to this space and time right there. Um, okay, so finally, um, while he's doing Tai Chi or, or uh, meditating, I guess, uh, they're talking and they're arguing and shit. He's like, what's going on here? And they're like, well, uh someone thinks that you can't do a sit-up without your without sight and hearing or something like that and uh tony's like oh of course it's true like there's a lot of abdominal muscle uh myths that need to be dispelled or something like that. i don't know what he said so he like you know they set him up so he could fucking do a sit-up into josh's ass oh, all right everyone ready one two and he comes up and you want him to hit the ass so bad, but it's a, you have to remember it's a PG movie. You, they're already pushing the envelope at this point. So he doesn't like fully hit it. He just kind of stares directly into the anus creepily. <laughs> uh, um, okay. So this is where he gives chase to Josh. Yeah, right. He starts he starts chasing the motherfucker like, oh, I want to get you. I don't know what he was planning on doing, but dude, if someone did that to me, I'd be pretty pissed off too. 
Now, was this planned? Because he does fall in that hole. I wonder if it was planned because they never actually said like, okay, no, here's the plan. You know what I mean? Because they yeah, saw I mean, the we didn't, hole we didn't on the way there. It. Yeah. While he was meditating, they had to do a bunch of this stuff because they could have pretended to be meditating like, oh, meditate, meditate, whisper, 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 <laughs> meditate, meditate, put some leaves over that hole. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, the kids the kids show up and they're like, oh my gosh, check out what happened. And they got him in the cage. Uh, Julie likes it and believes them that he snapped, which he did. Like, who knows what he would have did to Josh? He could have straight up killed oh him, my gosh, left yeah. him on the side of a railroad, like, stand by me, you know? Ugh. Such a needless movie reference, too. Just like... <laughs> uh, okay, so but then uh, Pat is like, "Oh my gosh, what the!" Like he gets in there, he's like, "Sorry, uh, Tony, this is nuts." And Tony's like, "Yeah, it is nuts. I'm gonna have you fired or some shit like that." Like immediately being an asshole. So Fucking much Pat worse. It, it, like yeah, it wasn't even directed towards his job. It was like you're the worst type of person in this world. Like you're worthless. You worthless piece. Of I was like, fuck, Tony. Like, I know you're upset, but read the room, man. This guy was the only one here to help. Read the room. <laughs> read the cage uh, area you're in. Yeah. <laughs> read, read the cage. Uh, okay. So now they start to take over the camp. They tie up Lars to a tree. Put so honey they, on his chest. They cover him in honey, and the way Jerry, the actor, says, "Bears love honey." He's having so much fun at this point. Like, I I didn't really feel one way or the other about Jerry this entire time, but the way he reads this line is and just enjoying this moment made me love him so much. I have no idea how to describe it besides just like if we played a clip right now of him saying, bears love honey. Um, bears love honey. <laughs> so so no, I, fun. Right, I agree. Um, I would have to say this actor, Jerry, uh, for a main lead or whatever, isn't, doesn't really leave an impression. Like you like Keenan more, you like Josh more, you know, you like uh sam more or something like that uh he's kind of just in the middle he's he, you know the typical protagonist is supposed to be like oh so the audience could see themselves in that person or whatever but it's like yeah well i have a personality you know so i don't see myself <laughs> in him but that one scene where he, he does have he gives you a little something with like bears love honey. yeah for sure and that that's stood out to me as well it's great um, and then they leave, and then Lars screams, and he thinks that deer is a bear. He doesn't know any better. <laughs> they don't have bears, huh? It just turns out to be a deer. Yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> um, they take down all the signs, put back up Camp Hope. Um, and then this is a weird fucking scene. So they go back to Tony. They put on, they play a cassette tape, and it's, it's like, you're a loser, Tony. Like you have no value, and like they're they're throwing his old words back at him. But it was it seemed very excessive. It seemed you know the slightly Guantanamo Bay like to me. I mean, <laughs> he was already going crazy. But if anything helped him get to the point that he got to, it was definitely that. That was pretty fucked up from those kids. Yeah, and then we are introduced to the fact that it's electrified. He fucking zaps himself, <laughs> which is pretty fucked up. I mean, I've seen, I, I seen the movie House Arrest, and they didn't electrocute their parents. They just locked them up. You know what I mean? But this is pretty hardcore, what they're doing to poor old Tony here. Yes, poor um, Tony, okay. who's been a complete piece of shit this entire time. <laughs> poor him. But it's also like it's hard to not feel bad for him because you know he didn't, like, He's not doing this because he's an evil person. He's doing this because he doesn't know any better. You know, he's he doesn't have the tools to function as a normal person. <laughs> it's very true. All right. So now we have the what I just wrote down as the overindulgence party. 
<laughs> at night. There's a fire. There's fucking all the food you could ever possibly want. Fucking Tim is off the wagon. He's like fucking eating food, junk food and shit. Um, and at this moment, it, uh, Pat is Pat and Julie are sitting there and Pat's like, oh, I should check that out or whatever. And Julie's like, no, stay with me. He takes his hand or whatever. Oh, so beautiful. Such a great moment. They fucking hooked up that night, man. Because the next morning, that's when Pat's like, I'm a man now and I'm in charge. And, you know, like, you know it to be true, Scott. I Come didn't on. even think about that. But that is so funny. Yeah, you're right. They had to have. Because his <laughs> he changed a lot in the in a very short time frame. Yeah, he she suddenly thought had too. What? She's like, that was short. Time hey, frame. you know what? I believe that Pat had it in him to last a long game. Are you sure? He's like, it's been years. You're just so pretty. I'm sorry. <laughs> Where? <laughs> oh my gosh. This, this, these are deleted scenes we're talking about here. You didn't see this part because you didn't watch the deleted scenes and they're not available. <laughs> uh, they're in the Disney vault, I'm sure. Uh, oh, and then this is the part where uh, Lars. They're like, hey, man, you're going to join us? He's like, I love you. I love, you know, like. So, yeah, Lars, as I always knew it or figured it out recently, Lars is a cool guy. He's cool. Yeah. He doesn't care where the money's coming from. <laughs> he just wants to be here. Right. Didn't they say, like, if you don't have a job, you're going to get deported? We found out that if you don't have a job, you get deported. So at this point, they just had their crazy ass party. And they wake up the next day because apparently everyone ate themselves into a food coma <laughs> and they start to wake up. So I really appreciated this moment because Pat was there. He's like, hey, just had sex for the first time. And I want to say uh, we need to take responsibility for our own weights. And then they start exercising and learning about fruits and veggies and stuff. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is this is cool that he could kind of lead the charge to help them better themselves without the crazy tactics Mr. Tony Perkis was trying to use. Right. But, uh, you know, it, it just makes you wonder, like, had Tony never shown up, apparently Pat never would have had them exercised. You know what I'm saying? Right. So. And it could have been the nurse afterwards. Or she's like, you want to keep going? Well, you got to get the kids to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this could have been after after sex talk. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, I'm just really worried about the kids' health. And he was like, oh, yeah, me too. Like, ever since I got here, I've been thinking the same thing. Uh, I really got to get them in shape. Even though he's been there for 18, 18 years. 18 years, never once, yeah. <laughs> But you know what? Uh, love will do that to you, right? Love, Scott. I believe they're in love. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, I just Parents want Day. Ah, Parents, Parents, Parents Day. Parents yeah. Day. <laughs> this is um, a moment where uh, Jerry's dad walks up, Jeffrey Tambor, right? And he's like, look at you, look at you, you look the same. What's happening here? Like, what's going on? <laughs> oh, terrific, terrific. Uh, Jeffrey Tambor, only in like, what, three scenes, but brings it. He's, he's hilarious. I'm it, a yeah. huge Arrested Development fan. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is where I think, oh, yeah, Tony, he's going to get out. He's going to manufacture a chocolate kiss yes. <laughs> out, of the out of aluminum foil uh, yes yeah um that's that's yeah but what did he do though didn't he just like few uh overblow the circuits by sticking a fork into this that's yeah. literally all he did he put a napkin around the fork and then just like blew the circuits out and then he like placed his hand out with the kiss going hey You've been doing such a good job as the guard. I just wanted to reward you. <laughs> like, what? Oops. Whoops. Butterfingers. 
And he's just straight. Like, Get out of here. You let me out of here, you little shit. Yo, fuck. That's right. That was the, the British kid, Nicholas, right? Yes. Poor, yeah. poor Nicholas. Falling for wow. the oldest trick in the book. A kiss. If I was writing this movie, this is the one joke I thought of. Uh, he's like, oh, you want a kiss? And then he's like, ooh. You know, he drops to the floor. It's like, oops, Butterfingers. Nicholas should have been, oh, you got Butterfingers too? Oh, that would have been good. That would have been yeah. good. Yeah. I was wondering where you're going with that, but that was good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so, but meanwhile, at the main cabin or whatever, they're, they're, the, the counselors are finally putting their plan into action, showing the footage of what he's been doing to them this whole time. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, liberties in the narrative. Like there's a shot where they pretend to eat a rat. <laughs> right. Josh takes out a rat from wherever and just slices it open. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so good. Uh, so yeah, all the parents are like, what the heck and stuff. And um, and then Julie's like, as a registered nurse, I know that this is not healthy, you know, mentally or physically to these kids and stuff and there's a lot more footage of just what he put them through and stuff like that um i think uh uh, the funniest part though is when it's him and josh he's like okay hey josh how do you like the food and josh is like oh it's great he's like wait (laughs) you're stepping on my lines let me say you know (laughs) that was that was awesome and again showing just how funny these two men are the fact that or uh, josh was a boy but the, those two comedy legends in my mind, Scott, had once. You're putting Josh as a comedy together. legend. What? He's I will hilarious. Say, I will say that he's a very funny person. It's unfortunate that he didn't get like his own show or something to where he could have latched on and been a good sidekick for somebody. But I don't know about calling him a comedy legend. Um, well, I said in my mind, but if you don't respect that, I understand. I do um, not. Speaking of speaking of Josh, Just speaking of, you don't understand. Uh, speaking of Josh, though, do you know what happened to him? I did hear about like him getting hooked on the druggies, and uh, yeah, but I he saw turned the, it around apparently. Saw the pictures and whatnot. Didn't look good. Too bad. I don't know. Okay. Just, that sounds really like dismissive and mean. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. When you said the druggies, I the druggies was like, oh, this and, is the man. <laughs> oh, poor boy. Too bad. Anyway, back to the movie. No, it is, it's very unfortunate. That's why I say that I wish that he would have found some footing in some type of something a little more like memorable. Because like you said, he landed some guest spots on TV shows, but that just wasn't ever going to like be something ideal for somebody like him, who I feel like had someone had someone taken him under their wing like uh, Jed Apatow did because he's the writer of this movie did with Seth Rogen. He could have helped maybe this guy, you know, come into something else. Right. Right. Yeah. Because I don't know that this, I don't remember the actor's name, but Josh has natural screen presence. He is, he's got a great pace and delivery and yeah, he's, he's hilarious. Anyways. Um, so finally, uh, Tony shows up. He's like in a window way up in the rafters. Just clapping. I must say. <laughs> oh, what was he? Did he? What, I think I'm confusing my own uh, things. Oh, no, because he actually does say. I put this in quotes, which is why it's confusing me. He's like, I must say, the villain was a little bit over the top. <laughs> jumps off of the thing spins lands ouch ouch (laughs) oh my gosh and then he proceeds to like no one can stop me takes he chugs a drink because he's probably has a dragon one. He smashes it he's smashing all this glass and he's just willing himself to walk on this glass (laughs) It Nobody is. can stop me. I'm too motivated. <laughs> uh, but it's Jerry's dad, fucking Jeffrey Tambor, who fucking punches him in the gut finally. And then that, that doesn't even stop him. What stops him is, 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 is himself. 
Because <laughs> he's like, oh, punch to the stomach. I'm going to do a bunch of back flips. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And like misses the last bit. Slides and hits his own head onto the wall. <laughs> oh. uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the end of him. His dad shows up, played by Ben Stiller again. It's great. What kills and, me uh, about this character is that because he calls himself Papa Perkis. But uh, have you ever seen the Ben Stiller show? Yes. So he's playing the character from that where this character that he's doing keeps going, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> no, and no, he, no. Never, do it. <laughs> he never once says do it in this. And it drives me fucking bonkers because I'm sitting there going the whole time like, say it, just say it, say do it, say it, please. And then no, nothing. Oh man, double points for you with the Ben Stiller show reference. That's fantastic. Yes. I'm a um, fan. Okay, so yes. Uh, so Tony's, uh, Tony's dad is like, okay, well, I'm going to close this. Goodbye. I'll give you guys your money back and shit. And they're like, what? No, we can't have this happen. So it's like, okay, fine. Uh, I'll put someone in charge who's been here the longest. Turns out it's uh, Pat with 18 years. He's Pat in charge Finley. now. Pat what? Pat Finley was his full name. That's all I said was Pat Finley. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah. no idea. Um, it doesn't suit him. He doesn't look like a Finley. Oh, yeah. He looks like a Pat, but yeah. <laughs> okay, so now Camp Hope is has fully returned. They have the blob. Uh, they, they took... Camp MVP's boat engine. What's worse? Driving by saying like you suck, you suck, you suck, you suck, and spray <laughs> painting some stuff. You know what I mean? Spray painting some stuff or completely stealing their boat engine. <laughs> um, you know, I didn't think about that, but the, the you're right. I'd say it's pretty fucking bad that they took the entire boat engine. But at the same time, they're camp MVP. They've got probably six other boats over there. They'll be fine. Why do we assume, because they're all skinny and in fit, that they have the budget for this? Because they all have matching fucking uniforms for their baseball team. That's, that's where all the money went, the uniforms. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just trying to argue. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So... Uh, uh, and then they're also rebuilding the carts because we get to the end. This is like an epilogue, right? Yeah. Ben Stiller's gone. I'm like, oh, like when I'm watching this the second time, like he's gone now. I actually don't have any notes whatsoever <laughs> for after Papa Burkus. <laughs> but it's not that I don't enjoy this last part. I just kind of was like, all right, well, the movie's over. Like you said, it feels like an epilogue. I'll, I'll just watch this. And it's... It is their little showdown at the end. They have their little race and it's fine. But I'm yeah. not, I don't give a shit really. Well, th this is a very generic summer camp movie cliche. They always have the big tournament at the end where you can finally prove yourself and stuff like that. But I would say that being fat has nothing to do. Uh, I don't know. I Well, they, it's they so were losing. They were losing super bad at first. So the fact that they were able to catch up and win makes me think that how do they were they not able to do that any other year? Because it seems like Camp MVP is full of fucking idiots, <laughs> which I don't point. think I can sit there and name the art that was being told, but five vice presidents, sure, why not? I'll do it right <laughs> now, but don't ask me to. Uh, well, let's let's attack, uh, tackle this thing in order. I just have the events. That's all I have. So this is the Apache Relay, and it's so nice, Scott, as a Native American, to see the cultural appropriation that we, we see happening right here. So blasé, so casual. Uh, meanwhile, the other M camp MVP, they're they're dressed up in like uh, togas and shit like that. So more cultural appropriation. I don't think all of MVP is all Greek. Am I right? as a white guy yeah <laughs> i just i just thought that it was pretty clever of me to point out that not all the white guys are greek on that side 
if you're going to address one cultural appropriation, you have to address the other. So there you go. All right, so let's start. This is the very first event, the sack race. What do you know? The fat kid can't jump in a sack or, yeah. Nothing, is that strictly for fat people? Because some people can't sack. Have you ever, have you ever race. sack raced? No, have you? Yeah, against children, but I murdered it. So no worries oh, that okay. I would definitely be the best anywhere possible. Okay, so right now, um, Camp Hope is far behind or behind. Next is some soccer stuff. Next is some balance beam obstacle course where they have to help the fat kid up there and shit like that. I have one question though. There's no fat kids that go to MVP? No. Otherwise they want to be MVP. Come on now. Come on now. What kind of camp is this? They call themselves MVP. Is it like, oh, if you were the best on your team, you automatically get to come to Camp MVP. What is Camp MVP? Because Camp Hope is a fat camp. What is that? It's a very good question because we apparently have Camp Pretty Girls, Camp In Shape Boys, and Camp Out of Shape Boys. So is there a Camp Out of Shape Girls somewhere as well? Oh, yeah. We're, that's the sequel. Heavyweights 2, 2000, well, they need some time to film it. 2023, Heavyweights 2, colon, what's the subtitle? Quick. Overweight. <laughs> Heavyweights, <laughs> colon, overweight. <laughs> Heavyweights 2, colon, overweights? Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> I'll take it, man. That's cool. Um. Okay, so next we have zip lining. That's not, uh, you could be fat and still zip line. There's nothing hard about that. Uh, football throw. We see Keenan make a good throw. Kills it. <laughs> but again, nothing to do with being fat. Uh, shave a balloon. Nothing to do with being fat at all. Scott and I have made challenges. And this is kind of like a challenge, right? Yeah, and actually, I wish I would have watched this a few years back when I was still doing them because that sounds like a lot of fun to attempt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, but Josh is able to do it because it's like he's been shaving a few years now. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm like, what? None of the skinny kids grew it's, again. Like, I, I just need <laughs> all of it to to fit into the theme, you know. Uh, next, we have the Hall of Intelligence, where you'll have to do a math problem. Which, skinny kids what the can't hell do math. Going on with <laughs> skinny kids can't do math. That math problem made I don't even understand what was going on in that math problem. Maybe it's because it's been about I don't know eighteen years since I saw a math problem, but I don't remember them being like that. Yeah, yeah, pretty complex. I think it's the British kid that comes into the clutch. I think he's the one that kind of picks us all up. Well, no. Football throw, shaving balloon. That was Keenan. That was Josh. And now uh, Nicholas, the British kid. But yeah, he fucking kills the Hall of Intelligence because he goes to the fine art. He knows exactly what that is. Mm -hmm. um, but really, if we were, if it wasn't for this kid, well... I guess the MVP are pretty dumb because they don't get any of this shit. Five vice presidents, let's go. Oh, I already said that I would be able to do that at a moment's notice, and I don't feel like, you know, so that's it. Al Gore. That Paris. was the first one that came to my mind as well when I was thinking about earlier when they did it. Biden. Nixon. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know a fifth one. Fuck. You don't remember one of the five that they said in this movie? You don't have that in the notes? I'm not trying to cheat. I'm trying to do this thing for real. I'm trying to think of five vice presidents. Why not Harris? I already said Harris, dude. Oh, I thought I didn't remember you saying that. That's how bad my memory is, Vince. <laughs> that is bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then finally, we come to the go karts and. 
Pat souped up this fucking cart. Cheater. Isn't it? A- yeah. <laughs> Listen, they kind of cheated though on the drive though, because the kid like was knocking into him and made him go through the woods and true. But okay, say say you and I, Scott, we got in a we got in a f- uh, professional boxing fight or whatever, right? And I had souped and, up gloves. No, 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 no. That I could turn on, just like no, no, no. You know what happens? You fight me, but you fight dirty. You like hit the crotch, and you know, like you poke me in the eye and shit like that. But I'm on steroids the whole time. Who's the bigger cheater? Hmm. The souped up cart. That's what I'm trying to get at. Man. <laughs> I was really thinking about it too. I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, but yeah, you're right. The souped up is, yeah, bad boy, bad boy. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, come on. Like, what are we kidding? Uh, when we were kids, it was great for him to fucking fly off, uh, you know, over the, the 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 bad guy's cart, get the win. You know, hope uh, camp hope wins, right? Yeah. And they got the trophy. Yeah, they got the trophy. But remember what the guy says, the other camp leader? He's like, we're going to be filing filing a complaint or whatever, or, a, or a, you know, we're going to, we're not going to accept this loss. The souped up cart. That's probably what it was. <laughs> like, oh, bullshit. <laughs> they really did gloss over that, like, kind of like, no, you guys fucking crazy, whatever, Bert. He's like, uh, Throw that shit in the lake so there's no evidence. (laughs) No, that, yeah, that was because he's like, oh, is this all that's important to you? Is just winning, right? So he gives it to the one fat kid who never utters a word. He's like super quiet and might be on the spectrum. But like, apparently, he just knows to toss it in the lake. Did they talk about this beforehand? (laughs) They, he feels the same way, man. He doesn't need some trophy showing that they won. Yeah, but I wish he would have uttered. I, I wish he would have said anything. I think the only thing he says is "He's coming." Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> so it's just so bizarre that Pat and the kid that seems really fucking delayed knew that this is. Hey, kid. Maybe that's what he would have done anyways. He's like, by the way, don't ever hand a <laughs> kid a trophy or anything. He'll toss that shit in the lake. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so there, so he's like, oh, uh, the evil camp counselor is like, you're you're crazy. He's like, yeah, I'm crazy. And he grabs Julie. He's like, crazy about my gal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And then, and then that's the end, basically. It ends on a swear word. He's like, uh, uh, what's his name? Captain. He's like, Pat, thanks for giving me the best damn summer ever. The yeah. end. Yeah. Yeah. Um... <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, this movie was full of, I mean, I got to give give all the props to Ben Stiller, Josh, and Pat coming up as a good quasi lead would you call him the lead no yeah i don't yeah. know he it, yeah. good, i mean he was when i watched when i watched the credits he was billed first as oh, like really? the starring Sweet. people yeah nice good for him yeah because i uh, i don't think i've seen him in much of anything i uh he was in Se- uh, seinfeld episode once but who wasn't back in the 90s and then he was in fraser but he was kind of like a on every other five episodes, something like that. So, yeah. And uh, Julie, very pretty woman. I don't know where she's gone from here. Uh, do you know where Tim went off to? He's Paul Feig. He was, uh, he ends up being a very famous director. Controversial, Bride, infamous. Bridesmaids, Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to just say Ghostbusters, so you'd be like, what the fuck? Why would you name that out of all the movies? <laughs> I forgot he made Bridesmaids. Uh, I've yet to watch it. Oh, sorry. Hey, I, think he, I think he might have just executive produced that one. He made Spy with uh, Melissa McCartney, though. I don't know. 
Who the fuck knows? There's so much trivia out there. Maybe you can let us know out there in the comments. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you watch this, uh, uh, don't be afraid to like and subscribe, comment, and I will try my damnedest to respond this time. Or Scott will. Scott can. Yeah, I will too. I'll be yeah. there. Yeah. I got things. Are we waving goodbye? What was no, that? I was just letting them know I had fingers to respond. One more time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, hey, that's the end of the movie. We'll probably talk about some more. I have some ideas on other movies to talk about, but uh, we'll see how this goes, right? Yeah, uh, we have been talking about doing Congo next, so it's not a boxing movie. He was just doing this, but we'll probably do that one next, so we will see you then. <laughs>